Aristotle called this the law of the excluded middle. That means there's no middle ground. You are saved or you're lost. Saved or sinner. You are either righteous or wretched. You are not one or the other. Or rather you're not both. You're one or the other. You are either with them or you are with us. And there is no middle ground. And I have come today to tell you at some point you must make a transition from them to us. The them are those who are perishing. And the us are those which are saved. And at some point you got to decide which side of the fence you're going to be on. So what I'm going to do in this sermon is I'm going to define who's them. And then I'm going to tell you who's us. And then you need to make a transition from them to us. Are y'all following me on today? All right. Now, the text in 1 Corinthians 1.18 makes some things real clear right off the bat. It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. So we know who the them are. Number one, we know that them are the folk who's perishing. Oh, they haven't perished yet, but they are on their way. And then the us, the text says, are those which are saved. So you, you have to understand right off the bat, if you are either with them or us, if you're with them, you're perishing. If you're with us, you are saved. Are y'all following me on today? Give me First Peter 4. Let's further define the us and the them. Us and them. Who are the us and who are the them? And which side of the fence are you? Are you with them or are you with us? Are you with the saved or are you with the folk who are perishing? First Peter chapter 4 beginning in verse number 16. And let's see what the Bible says. Yeah, if any man suffer as a Christian. If any man suffer as a Christian. Let him not be let ashamed. Let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify, but let him God, glorify God on this behalf. On this behalf. For the time is come. For the time is come. That judgment must begin. That judgment must begin. At the house of God. At the house of God. And if it first begin at us. And if it begin at us. Now. Who's the us? The us of the Christians of verse 16. And the us of the folk in the house. If judgment begins at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, so the us are in the house. And the folk in the house were called Christians. So if you're going to be part of the us, you got to get in the house. When you get in the house, you get a name called Christian. All we need to find out is what's the house. First Timothy 3.15, if I tarry long. That thou mayest know how to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. Well, what's the house? The house is the church. So if you're in the us, you're in the house. If you're in the house, you're in the church. If you're in the church, you got the name Christian. And I've come today to tell you, God does not have any hyphenated Christians. The only folk in the house, they were called Christians and Christians only. There was no such thing as an adjective that came before Christian to describe which denomination they were in. Let me say, let me just say, let me give you an example. I used to be a Methodist, but in the Bible there was no such thing as a Methodist Christian. Hmm, Y'all gonna help me long in here. When you got in the house, you, became, you got the name Christian. And Christian only. And I'll do you one better. The folk in the house are the only Christians. That one gets uncomfortable. There was only one house in the New Testament. That house was the church. There was only one church in the New Testament. And all the Christians were in that church. And nobody outside of the Lord's house was called a Christian. They were Christians, Christians only, and the only Christians. How y'all following me on the day? Uh, that belongs on television right there. So when you look at us, the us are in the house. 
the folk in the house were called Christians. And the house was the church. So he says, if judgment begins at us. Now let me describe that judgment. Uh, because some people think this is second coming judgment. And it's not. Uh, he says, if judgment begins at us. When the second coming judgment happens, there is no line where certain folk get judged first, then we get judged second. Or we get judged first and they get judged second. There's no such theology in the Bible. When judgment day comes, everybody gets judged instantaneously. Are y'all following me? There is no the Christians go first and then after we finish, God says, all right, next group. I mean, that's not how judgment works. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Yeah. It, there's, not, there's no waiting room where I wait, while, while, well, the, or rather the sinners of the world wait while the Christians go first and then God judges us and say, all right, those of you going to heaven, you go ahead. And then he goes, all right, you folk in the waiting room, please come out, bailiff, get them. That, that's, that, it doesn't work that way. The Christians in 1 Peter 4 were already under judgment in the Roman Empire. Peter's argument is, if judgment is starting with us now, with our persecution, what you think going to happen to y'all? If you think the judgment you've given us is bad, you wait for the judgment that's going to happen to the sinner. Peter's saying, if judgment begins at us, what's going to happen to them who have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are y'all following this? So it's not a second coming judgment. Peter's just, if you read the background of 1 Peter, first Peter was under the government rule of Nero. And Nero was already judging these Christians. He was already setting them on fire and, and persecuting them. They were already under judgment. But Peter says, if you think it's bad on us, if you think this judgment's bad, what you think's going to happen to folk who are not Christians under God's judgment? Are y'all following that on today? All right, let's keep going. He says, judgment must begin at the house of God if it first begin at us. Who's the us in the house? Who the folk in the house? The Christians. What's the house? The church. Now, who's them? Let's stay in the same chapter. Go ahead and read. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What shall the end be of? Now, who's the them? The folk that have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you're either with the us that's in the house. The us, that's the Christians, or you are with the them that have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I've come today to tell you, this morning is the morning where you need to make a decision. Because you ought not leave this building with them. If you're going to leave this church building, you better leave with us. The folk that are saved. And not the folk that have or not, not the folk who have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of folk with them. Who's the them? The folk who have not obeyed. Who's the us? The folk who are saved in the house, got the name Christian, and they are members of the church. Now give me 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 7. Verse number 7. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse Number seven, what does the Bible say? And to you who are troubled. And to you who are troubled. Rest with us. Rest with us. <laughs> Ooh, Lord have mercy. I'm glad the apostles were members of the us. And, and they said, if you want rest, you need to rest with us. I, 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 have you ever been tired? I'm looking forward to the day when God will give us some rest. I, I don't want to be with the them that have not obeyed the gospel. I want to be with the us who are going to rest. If you're anything like me, I'm tired of fighting sin. I, I need some rest. I'm tired of fighting false doctrine. I, I need some rest. I'm tired of struggling with false members and false brethren and folk that stab you in the back. I'm looking for the day when I can get some rest. Anybody ever been tired? Ever, anybody ever looked forward to the the day when God will give you a mansion robe and crown. Anybody looking forward to the day when there's no more mortgage payment and no more bills and no more light bill and no more mortgage and no more all the way. If you're tired of getting mail every now and then that says you're about to be evicted. No more eviction notice. I'm going to have my own mansion where the mortgage has already been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm looking for my rest church because every day I live I get just a little more tired. 
dying. Every, every day I live, I realize I need to go home. Every time I live, I realize that I need to hurry up and get my life right. So when God comes back, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, but I'll make you ruler over many. I'm looking for rest, church, and I refuse to be with them because it's time to get with the us. And I, when you're with the us, you get rest. You, 